Hello, my name is McKay Barley and I work with Quake Wrap. We're at a job site with three damaged H piles and we're going to be showing you how to install our Pile Medic application step by step. You can see in the back we have an installer currently just doing some basic surface prep on the install area. Per design for each install, we have a different allocation for the amount of rebar and where it goes. On this jacket, we're going to have four rebar number seven and I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole for it. After the hole is drilled we're going to inject it with a anchoring resin and then put in the rebar to size. Next we're going to be installing the shear clamps which is used to help the concrete encasement lock on to the, the pile significantly better. Apply those Depending on the design and what the torque is recommended at, try to torque it up to that. Right now we're doing 80 foot-pounds. So the next step in the process is to install the spacers to guarantee a, a quality jacket radius. Got a zip tie. Depending on the install will determine the amount of spacers used. We're just going to use four on this one. I'm going to bring it down to every corner. Per design, you will have different types of spacers, different size spacers, different amounts of spacers. There's a lot of variables. Depending on the type of install that we're doing, we may have to cut down the jackets to size. Typically, they come at a 48 inch width. We're going to be cutting this one down to 38 inches. All you have to do is mark a line at your width. And we like the shear route. It works pretty well. Go ahead and just cut that line out and you're good to go. On this application, we're using 220 TC. It is a, for every 100 grams of part A, use 43 grams of part B. As far as applying the resin to the jacket, you typically want to go at least half of the length of the overall jacket. Take your resin, let it droop out. You want to make sure that there is no separation in colors. You want to have it as consistent as you can. Otherwise, any portions that are black or white will not harden and you're not going to be able to guarantee a good bond. Now be careful, this resin can be a big pain if it gets on you, so the cleaner you are in the process, the better and smoother the job will run. Try to minimize amount, the amount of resin you get on your plastic protective tarps or anything like that. Just to give us a little bit more access and ease of handling, depending on the application it might make sense to have one on each corner depending on the elevation you're trying to work on. But on this one, one on each top corner should be perfect. You want the non-resined end to be the inside of the jacket. The resin side is gonna be the outside layer of the wrap. So go ahead and wrap it around. can to get a nice tight radius and then go ahead and start pulling that in and just lock it around nice and tight. Let's go a little tighter than that. There we go. Perfect. Now we bring this around. You want to disconnect that chip tie? And then clamp this top corner on the outside. You might have to loosen it slightly. Once a basic radius has been set and you've locked in this top corner, you can take some zip ties, get them down to a decent grip. I'd recommend at least three sets per height of jacket. Try to distribute that load. Okay, 
Once you have the zip ties on to set the radius, I like to use these meter sticks to force this inside edge, this outside edge to sit flat as the resin cures. After it's been placed, you can use your zip tie gun. Tighten it down a little bit. Got everything set up the way you like. You can come in with some screws and run it along the seam to guarantee that each layer has been locked into place. Once you're satisfied with the amount of zip ties you have on and the secureness of the jacket, you can walk away for I'd say about 12 hours, let it cure, and then you can start filling it up with the grout. Take that, squish it around. Depending on the job application, we have different products that can be used to seal the bottom of the jacket to guarantee that your first pour of grout will not leak out. On this application, we're just going to make it simple and use some duct tape. I'm going to run this duct tape all the way around, put several layers coming off the jacket onto the ground. And all that's going to do is allow the first pour to come in, not spill out, harden, and then you can fill up the jacket from there. When filling the pile with grout, it's important to put a nice base on there and let that cure. I'd recommend one to two inches, whatever you feel comfortable enough that isn't too heavy to try to push out the bottom end. While pouring the grout, be sure to go real slow, watch the bottom of the pile and make sure you're not spilling out. It's not a bad idea to give it a little bit of knocking. You don't want to hit it too hard though. It can shift and mess up your positioning. Once you've reached the point where the grout has sufficiently cured, you can go ahead and cut off your zip ties. And any additional materials that have been applied. And then to finish off the pile, you come in with some 220 and put a seam on any overlaps or any exposed areas that you want to protect. Once your resin and grout has cured, you can go over with any paint or top coat that you'd like. That wraps it up. Thanks for checking us out.